Well, hello there, minders. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. Well, we're going to jump right into this one today. I'm painting on Saunders Waterford. It's been a while. I wanted to get back to painting on it again. And here's my reference. Now, I'm not painting from any one of these pictures. It's just a collection of rock and cliff and sort of mountainous terrain that I'm using to get the characteristics of what it is I want to paint. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Using reference to get the characteristics you want and then painting from your own imagination. And by the way, those reference shots were a board that I have on Pinterest under drawing reference. You can go take a look and maybe pin some of those to your own Pinterest if you want. I'll put the link below. Pinterest is a great way to assemble your reference. You just have to be careful with Pinterest because a lot of those are either photos or art that somebody has done. So you don't want to copy it and then pass it off as your own work. And that's not what I'm doing today. This will be an original work. But as I mentioned, I'm using those references to get an idea of the characteristics that make up sort of a rocky cliff, outcropping, mountain, whatever you want to call it. Well, I'm calling this spontaneous because I have a very specific purpose here. Uh, in the same way that I do like trees and underbrush and ground landscapes, I wanted to just splash some paint around and see what emerged. That's kind of what I define spontaneous painting as. I don't necessarily have an idea what it's going to be. I did in this case have a just a barely an idea maybe for some composition and placement and maybe a few elements. Sort of a closed line if you will of elements that I could pull one down and say I'll stick that here. But in general I didn't and the bottom part you see me working on here I'm treating very much like I usually treat my spontaneous paintings. Just trying different techniques and seeing if something works out. But I don't typically do a lot of heavy rocks or rocky cliff kind of scenes. And that's because it usually takes more planning. More careful uh, assembly of reference, maybe a pre-drawing. And normally I would do that this way. The whole reason I wanted to do this, though, uh, is because, it, well, it's fun, of course. I think spontaneous painting is fun. But I've been studying and sketching some rocks off and on, and, you know, I just want to kind of test my understanding of it. Uh, this comes into play whenever I do spontaneous painting, is understanding a subject. Uh, I exercise that muscle. Uh, not only from drawing from life on location, drawing from good reference, but then going and trying to find those same shapes and values uh, in spontaneous colors and paint that's just put down. See if my eye can pick those out. See how well I understand the things that I've uh, observed and sketched. So when I do spontaneous painting, that's what I do. And it's the same thing here on this piece. Uh, I have been working on my understanding of rocks and rocky cliffs, mountainous terrain that includes a lot of rocks. Again, uh, a spontaneous painting like I'm doing now is just a good way to exercise the, my muscle of understanding what that subject is like how it reacts in light. You can spontaneously paint anything. I, I would probably define it more as painting from your head, but you can paint anything from your head that you're well, well, well acquainted with. Some of the best comic artists, for instance, can draw just about any pose of the human body because they are so well acquainted with it. They spent so much time sketching and studying it. So I guess in that sense, it's not really spontaneous. But I'm calling this spontaneous just because of the way I apply the paint. Now working on this bottom part here, which is fairly typical of how I do uh, spontaneous landscapes, I'm trying different things. Um, kind of wish I'd left it more vignette-like. 
But, you know, that's one of the drawbacks of spontaneous painting. You don't have a plan going in, so when you go in and things are not working out quite right, you just kind of have to go with the flow. No pun intended. Yeah, so I wanted some foresty sort of shrub, underbrush, trees uh, kind of creeping up through this little valley that's developing. And the pinkish uh, sandy hues to the right and, of course, the, the more distant hill behind that are all going to be very rocky, kind of mountainous outcroppings, cliffs, if you will. And my focus here will mainly be on painting those rocks, taking my understanding of it, finding those shapes, finding those values, and making them look like believable rocks. So that's what we're doing. But we're still in the wet, washy phase. I've been using a Princeton Neptune Oval Wash. It's kind of great for these situations. Now here you're seeing a major flub. I thought about taking that out, but so many of you said you like when I include my mistakes, my flubs, and how I deal with them. My mistake here was spraying that sky without being prepared. I usually have a rag or a paper towel in my left hand, and so if a r run occurs, you know, I can catch it. I did not have that. And so I was aggressively spraying. You can see just above that distant mountain, there's a stain. So how I deal with it is I leave it alone. I don't want to go scrubbing paper unnecessarily. I blotted as much as I could, and we'll see. We'll see if it shows. As you can see, I've got even more distant mountains here, and it turns out it didn't really show at all. So best thing is not to panic and just keep painting. So I've got just about all the color and elements blocked in, at least the flat values. Now here I'm starting my painting of sort of the rocky, mountainous values and shapes. What's tricky about it is you just uh, like any kind of painting is you're thinking in negative as well as positive. So I knew I wanted some highlights, as you would. The sun's coming from the left, and then the rest will be in shadow. Now, as a general rule of thumb, although really more of a guideline, a lot of times on rocks or even mountainous terrain, there's three basic value categories. You have your your heavy highlights or your bright highlights, that's like a facet. And you have your middle values, and then you have deep shadows. Sure, you'll have values that fall in between, but uh, here I'm doing a combination of, of negative painting around those highlights and then lifting for some softer edges. And we're going to start working on this foreground cliff doing the same thing. But I would say those shadow values that I'm painting in now and the ones that I painted on the one to the left are a deep middle value. They're not the deepest, but they're in the deep value category. And then at some point I will add yet another value deeper. I'm looking over to the left at my reference, but I'm not actually painting something from a photo, one particular photo. I am looking at multiple photos and looking at the various shapes that the shadows make to kind of glean characteristics. Are they long and skinny pointed at the top and kind of wider at the bottom sometimes, or are they more like 
thin to flared thick back to thin. Yeah, sometimes. And at the same time, I'm thinking about the positive shapes, the values where the highlights are, what I'm left with. Yeah, so it's an interesting challenge. And, you know, again, I could have drawn this out meticulously, planned where all of these deeper values and highlights and shapes of the mountains and all of it go. And really, uh, you, that's something you should do in most cases. But I want to test my understanding. And it also tests and reveals to me what I don't understand. And I think that's extremely valuable. So when I get to painting spontaneously and I, I go, oh, what do I do now? What do I do here? I don't know what I should paint or how I should paint it. I'm revealing to myself where I need a little bit more understanding of the values and shapes and where I do understand it fairly well. As I get to this further range back, um, it's more distant, so it's going to be less contrast. So I'm not going to do a lot of features on here, but I'm going to paint a few. Choosing a cooler color uh, to help it recede off into the distance. I don't necessarily hope to have a masterpiece out of this. This is a, basically a study, even though it's not really in a sketchbook. I just want to do something a little bigger this time. Like painting trees, I find painting uh, rock formations just really, really fun. There's an abstract quality to them. But now we're going to go ahead and work on this bottom part. And this part just gets into more of a typical spontaneous landscape for me. I'm just going through some of that vegetation, deciding where the contrast edges are. And enhancing those, seeing what I can turn into a tree shape, so on and so forth. Typical of my spontaneous paintings. You know, when you get to this stage where you have a good bit of your base down and some of the values established, you're starting to see where everything is going or where it could go. This is where it just becomes super, super fun, at least for me. So remember me saying how there are basically three major value categories in rocks. Uh, and it all has to do with where the facets or where that side of the rocks are facing. Well, I'm working on the third. And there, you know, in reality, there can be many. There can be a half a dozen different values. But time and again, I find they fall into three main categories. The main highlights the middle values and the shadows. And this is all very spontaneous. I, I'm looking at where the washes I've already put down are, looking for logical spots to kind of delineate crevices, deeper values, facets that are facing the more shadowed area of the scene. And it really starts to turn that form around. This is a level that I really admonish any artist who wants to do uh, highly representational art to work towards. Uh, not only does it improve your art, but it also improves the originality of your work because it's coming from you. And what I'm speaking of here is striving to understand subjects, whether it be the human face or a flower or a tree, or a rock, or a dog, or a bird, seeking to understand the characteristics. Um, and by that, I'm, I'm not just talking about anatomy, if it's an animal or human, but uh, how they typically look in light and shade, how values tend to fall on them. In this case, with rocks, uh, you have sharp, crisp facets, and I have a lot of those here. But you're going to see me soften some of those because uh, this you could be painting rocks that are very rounded. They have very soft edges. I felt like I wanted some of those in this painting. So uh, very soon here, we're going to get to softening some of those. 
I'm going to do some lifting. And so this little brush here is a good highlight brush uh, to lift areas where I've already painted. And that's what I'm doing. And you'll see me do this also with a bigger flat uh, Da Vinci Cosmo top. I don't know what this brush is. I, I think I got it at Hobby Lobby. It's actually a bristle brush, so it's stiff. Well, I hope uh, I've made some sense, at least, to you on what I'm doing here and why I did it. And I hope maybe it'll encourage you to whatever subject is your favorite, uh, to try to gain levels of understanding that go beyond just copying. Copying, by the way, is a great way to, to, to start to learn your techniques and being able to draw accurately what you see. You should definitely do that. If you feel like you've reached um, some goals in that area, next, try developing understanding. So understanding what's happening in that flower, in multiple versions of that flower or that landscape or that rocky formation, uh, so that in such a way that you can apply it when, when you see the opportunity to paint something from your, your head or your mind, or you say, oh, I'm painting this landscape, and a rock looks like it would go right there. Now I can draw on my understanding of how rock facets work. It just takes a lot of observation and sketching, but it's a goal. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate you watching. This is the finished piece. Thank you so much, patrons, for your continued support of this channel. We'll see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.